Now, a couple of days ago, Crocoblock released an update to Jet Engine, taking it to version 2.10. There was quite a few new tools and features included in that update. I'll link the video that Kate released on that a couple of days ago so you can check out everything. Today, I wanna to focus on two of the features that were released and the two features that kind of get me interested the most. One of them is for Gutenberg, one of them is basically for your whole WordPress setup. So let's take a look at these two features right now. Okay, so the first one we're gonna take a look at is we're gonna hop over into the dashboard I'm going to say the dashboard, I've jumped into the post section. Now you can use this feature with posts and with pages, basically anywhere you can in, use the Gutenberg editor. So let's just hop into one of these particular posts. And once we open this up, nothing looks any different. However, there is a really useful new feature that's been added in and one that I'm kind of excited about and hopefully this will be expanded into more areas. And that's the ability now we can start to reference dynamic content directly inside the Gutenberg editor without the reliance upon the Jet Engine specific widgets. So we can use things like headings, cover, paragraph, those kinds of things. How do you use it though? Very easy. Let's just go ahead and just insert a new area underneath this particular paragraph. We'll go ahead and go to insert something. And you can see if I go and choose something like heading, for example, we now have the little database or dynamic content icon, and this allows us to reference dynamic data, but it gives us a massive amount of ways that we can pull in data. Let's open this up. Now it starts off very, very easily. You can choose content. Once you choose content, then we can go ahead and choose the data source. And if we open up the data source, you can see we've got currently three options, the current object property, custom data, or dynamic function. Now the current object property is basically the post you're currently looking at. Custom data, as his name would suggest, is custom data, pulled in from meta fields, those kinds of things. And dynamic functions is probably a little bit beyond what I want to cover in this kind of just introduction overview. So we'll select the current object property. That now opens up the next set of options. And you can see this is kind of like a bit of a wizard. So now we can go ahead and choose well, where do we want to pull information from? You can see this is broken down into posts, terms, users, and so on. And if we open this up, you can see there's a lot of options. And if you're coming from Jet Engine, you've probably seen a lot of these options before. If we go and choose something different, so for example, say custom data, you can see we now get different options inside the select what data to show area. So now we can do things like the current ID, current categories, current meta, those kinds of things. And again, there's a lot of extra options inside here, including title, today, you know, those kinds of things. Related parents, grandparents, jet engine, meta fields, tons of options. And finally, if we take a look at the dynamic functions, you can see inside there now we can choose things like summed averages, counts, maxims, and those kinds of things. So I'm sure there's lots of use cases for where you'd want to use these different kinds of functions, and I'm sure as you use this, you'll find use cases for it. You could even go as far as grabbing SQL query results. You've also then got data source, post, term, and user metadata. And again, these are context-based, so depending upon which one of these you choose, you'll see you get a different subset of options. Let's stick to the source option. Option. open up the property and let's just do something really really simple let's just say we want to grab the user display name just grab that in there we can then take the data context and you can see we can open this up and we can pull in information from the current user which is global the current user for current scope query user current post author so let's just say we want to grab the current post author and then you have the data filters underneath. So if you want to filter the output, you may be using something like a date and you want to format that date, then you can filter this and you've got the normal callback options that you'd expect to see inside Jet Engine when using it alongside, you know, uh, Elementor or Gutenberg. But this is all then directly inserted into the body of the actual content. So pretty cool to see that. We don't need to worry about formatting this, so we could disable that. And if you want to reset everything, if you're testing things out, you can hit reset and that'll reset it all. And as you can see, what that does is it inserts the typical macro that we used to see in when working with Jet Engine and all of the Crocoblock tools. So pretty cool to see how easy it is to do that. There's some other things you could do though. Let's just say I've created, funnily enough, which I already have, in true Blue Peter fashion, a couple of meta fields, custom meta fields. And one of those is to choose media. So I can choose an image. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull in an image. We'll choose this one, for example. But what I can do is I can still reference that dynamic meta information that's inside this post, inside the body of my content. So I can think of some kind of crazy use cases where you may want to give the end user the ability to just upload an image and then they'll be inserted into the post and probably many other use cases. Maybe this is a little bit out there. But let's just say I want to put in 
the cover which is also supported. So let's just click on that and you can see now again, we get the dynamic content. We can obviously still use the upload and use the media library, but we can select this and we can grab the image URL. We can select that and we can go through the image source, which is going to be in this example, the cover image, which is part of my post, a custom meta field. We'll select that option from there. Now nothing appears inside here because it's dynamically linked and I haven't updated the post, so it can't pull it in just yet. Now, if I wanted to, I could also go ahead and change this title and I could use content inside this, select the source, current object property, and I can put the title of things in, you know, whatever I want. I could even reference dynamic meta information that's custom created as part of Jet Engine. We'll leave it as it is and we'll just put in some normal text and we'll just say cover image. So now if I update this to save everything that I've done, we'll preview this page. And as you can see, it's everything inserted in If we scroll right the way down, you can see there's our inserted dynamic image pulled in from that custom meta field as part of this post. Like I say, it's a bit of a strange example, but I wanted to show you how you can reference meta information in the post itself and then pull this information up. So you might want to, for example, disable certain aspects of Gutenberg, but still have the flexibility as an admin to use Gutenberg. Well, you could use a kind of function like this and then give the end user just access to the custom meta fields and disable the Gutenberg editor. I'm sure there's crazy use cases out there. But this is one of those things that I think is really powerful. We now have the ability to reference dynamic data directly inside Gutenberg using Jet Engine and some of its built-in functions. So the next feature that I want to demonstrate is the ability to very easily apply conditions for when and where your Metabox or Metabox groups will show up. So let me just demonstrate what I'm talking about. Let's hop over into Jet Engine, hop into our Metaboxes section, and inside there I've already created a Metabox group. Let's open this up and you can see this has been associated with the posts. So any post will have these two custom meta fields shown up inside there, but I don't want that to be the case. So I've now got a new option that allows me to add a condition. Let's click on that and that opens up the option to set what condition it is we want. If we go into the conditions and drop this down, you can see we've got five different options currently. Now the first four are pretty self-explanatory. Included in posts, exclude from posts, include and exclude from user roles. Pretty straightforward. However, the post has taxonomy terms is a little bit more comprehensive than you may first think. Once we select that, we can then choose what taxonomy. Now, me thinking taxonomies, well, it's just tags and categories, and you would be right, but we have more options. We have categories and tags, but we also have navigation menus, link categories, formats, and themes. So for example, if you're using formats as part of your setup, so you may have video post types, standard post types, those kinds of things, you can open up the formats and then you can go ahead and you can start typing in. So let's just say, for example, video, and you can see that now will limit this to be in posts that have the format set to be video. Then these custom fields will show up. Let's remove that for now. Let's go ahead and set the condition. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep this relatively straightforward. We're gonna choose that taxonomy terms. We're gonna open this up, we're gonna choose categories. Once we choose categories, we can now go ahead and start typing in the category or categories that we want to enable this on. So let's just say we wanna set this to be on the news category. We can insert that, now that's limited this. If we wanna stack more, we can do that. And if we wanna add additional conditions, we can do that as well. So you could get quite comprehensive and very granular using these tools. Okay, so once we've done that, let's just update this meta box, hop over to our posts. Let's open up a post that's not in the news category. This one, for example, is just in industry. Let's open that up, scroll to the bottom, and you can see there's no custom meta fields inside there. Let's come back out of this, open up one that we can see is inside the news category. Once we open that up, we scroll right the way down, you can see there's our additional post fields, our custom meta fields. It really is as simple as that. And I can see a lot of use cases where this can streamline the whole interface and take out additional meta fields that are not really required for certain kinds of posts or pages. And that's basically what I want to cover in this video. These are two features that I think are really important to working with Jet Engine, and I'm really happy to see more support for working with Gutenberg. The ability now to pull in relevant dynamic information alongside what we can do with the widgets we have supplied for Gutenberg with Jet Engine is a really refreshing thing to see. But as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your opinions? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, all the applicable links, including the video that Kate released a couple of days ago covering all the features, will be linked in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats, and until next time, take care.